as far as the east is from the west, so far as he set our sins from us. We give him thanks as we come into his presence, that we are forgiven and cleansed, our sin is removed from us, and we are able to come into the presence of our holy God. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word. Seek my face, your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, lead me on a level path, because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. This is my desire, that God will keep me in the faith, keep me in his household all the days of my life. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead you restore me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, to the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without sink ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Well, here's a psalm where the psalmist is praising God for his deliverance, but he remembers when he relied on his own strength, he was brought low. It was only when he put his trust in the Lord that he received deliverance. 1 Samuel 14, 24-46. Now Saul committed a very rash act on that day. He laid an oath on the troops saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before it is evening and I have been avenged on my enemies. So none of the troops tasted food. All the troops came upon a honeycomb, and there was honey on the ground. When the troops came upon the honeycomb, the honey was dripping out, but they did not put their hands to their mouths, for they feared the oath. Jonathan had not heard his father charge the troops with the oath, so he extended the staff that was in his hand and dipped the tip of it in the honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes brightened. 
Then one of the soldiers said, Your father strictly charged the troops with an oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who, who eats food this day. And so all the troops are faint. Then Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. See how my eyes have brightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if today the troops had eaten freely of the spoil taken from the enemies. For now the slaughter among the Philistines has not been great. After they had struck down the Philistines that day, the troops were very faint. So the troops flew upon the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slaughtered them on the ground. And the troops ate them with the blood. Then it was reported to Saul, look, the troops are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. And he said, you have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone before me here. And Saul said, disperse yourselves among the troops and say to them, bring all your oxen or their sheep and slaughter them here and eat. But do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So all the troops brought their oxen with them that night and slaughtered them there. And Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first altar that he had built to the Lord. Then Saul said, let us go down after the Philistines by night and despile them until the morning. Let us not leave one of them. They said, do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, let us draw near to God here. So Saul inquired of God, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. Saul said, come here, all you leaders of the people. Let us find out how this sin has arisen today. For as the Lord lives who saves Israel, even if it is my son Jonathan, he shall surely die. But there was no one among all the people who answered him. And he said to all Israel, You shall be on one side, and I, my son Jonathan will be on the other side. The people said to Saul, Do what seems good to you. Then Saul said, O Lord God of Israel, will, why have you not answered your servant today? If this guilt is on me or on my servant, uh, son Jonathan, O Lord God of Israel, show it by lot. If the guilt is on your people, Israel, show it by lot. And Jonathan and Saul were indicated by lot, and the people were cleared. Then Saul said, Cast the lot between my son Jonathan and me. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. And Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the tip of my staff that was in my hand. Here I am, I will die. Saul said, God, do so to me, and more also, you shall surely die, Jonathan. Then the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has accomplished this great victory in Israel? Perish the thought, as the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has worked with God today. So the people ransomed Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul withdrew from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. In this story, Saul does something that seems spiritually calls a fast in the middle of the battle. So the people become faint and weak. So they can't accomplish all that God has called them to do. We must be careful that we don't do those things that appear spiritual, but are actually not God's will or what he's called us to do. Um, there also, this, uh, this, this thing, this fast, caused the people to commit a greater sin. When the fast, when it came time to break the fast, they were so hungry. They killed animals in a non-kosher way. Uh, sometimes we can appear spiritual, but our appearance of spirituality, our form of godliness, denies the power thereof. Luke 23, 13 to 25. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city, and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed 
Jesus over as they wished. Here in this there's a man in prison called Barabbas who deserved to die. He was released and Jesus was put to death. What a picture of our salvation. We were those under God's judgment who deserved to die. But Jesus died in our place, so we are set free to live forever. Lord, we lift up this day and we pray, Lord, for our callings in it. We pray, Lord, we will be useful to you, productive this day, that, Lord, we will serve you with gladness in all that you call us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>